Mental illness. Mental illness. Mental illness. Mental health. Mental health. Mental health. Mental health is a serious issue in today's society. What happens when you finally receive help from a private hospital? Is it worth it or does it make patients feel worse? I'm Lily Ward and I'm going to be looking into whether patients feel like their time in a private hospital was worth it. With three in four mental illnesses starting in childhood and 10% of children and young people aged 5 to 16 years having a clinically diagnosable mental illness, it's no wonder most NHS adolescent wards are full. Some people then turn to private hospitals in order to get urgent treatment. And these are their stories. I'm Lottie, I'm 17 and I had anorexia. Yeah, I'm Tara, and, um, I'm 16 and I initially went in for my name's Phoebe, I'm 16 and I was diagnosed with anorexia, depression, anxiety, selective mutism, I also have the hospital. What is your story about the hospital? I think mine's a bit different because um, I didn't first go to the wife when I was in the adult bit of the hospital. And I was on bed rest, so I was like, allowed out of bed for two weeks. And then like one day they came into my room and they were like, we're going to the wife you today. And I was like, oh, like, oh my God, like I'm scared. Overall, I found it really fun. I met some really interesting people. I think some of my, my best friends um, are in there because I made so many friends that I struggle to make friends at school because like, I don't know, I just find that um, friends are quite different to me. And um, everyone like, can relate to me. So I was admitted in October 2016 and I initially came as a day patient but then after the suicide attempt I came in in um, I was there for three months and honestly I don't think I'm I don't think the doctors really understood as much as they could have. The first thing she said when she met me was like really offensive. She said, she, she was like, oh, it's like, it looks like, like the Holocaust or something. And I was like, oh. like, like, I think she was like doing it to like make me feel bad. Like, yeah. people in the world don't have a choice. And every time she saw me, she just had a go at me. Also, I wasn't trying hard enough. She'd constantly move my weight target up. So I'd cry every time I met her. I'd I really hated my doctor. Um, I don't know, I just felt that she completely didn't understand. The first time I met her, she just sort of said, why would I do it just right away? And I was just like so triggered by she didn't give me any other options. She didn't try and help me in the community first. Um, I just felt that she didn't really get it. She didn't really have any sort of sympathy. She didn't really feel like she had feelings. She just wanted to show I'd get her. She just said things that were really unhelpful. She made sort of like assumptions about me without like talking to me at first. But she didn't really listen to what I had to say. I don't know. What about your medication? You kept changing up. I think I was on 12 different types of 12 <laughs> medications. Or like 12 pills. Uh, I had quite an interesting situation. Yeah, they just kind of like mixed them together like a cocktail. Like, I felt a bit like a kiddie, you know what I mean? Like, they just put all these yeah. different things, I didn't know what it was going to do. I was on 150 milligrams of sertraline, and then I was on the contraceptive pill because my period, like, messed up because of anorexia. And then I was on, like, something else, but I can't remember what it's called. It's called, like, something else, like another antidepressant sort of thing. And then I was on, like, Benigan because I had, like, insomnia from anorexia. And then I was on Culpamin after every meal, so I didn't vomit it up. And then I had like loads of different like vitamins and stuff to like help my body. Yeah. I first came they tried to put me on the surgery, and it made me very quite Me, and then later, I 
I didn't really know what I was going to like, yeah, so just give it to you. Can you guys tell me about a scary experience you had? There was this girl called Sam. I don't know, it was on New Year's Eve, she came back early from the lady. And then um, the nurses put this up on the table with um, like a couple of boards. And then she started like being strong on her sick party box. And then she was like punching her like, in the bag. And, um, and then she like, and then she started like, running after her and being like crying. And then she was like, I'm going to say something. She was just like running after us, like running after the nurse, the nurse like ran away from her and, and then they like pulled her back up or something. And then um, so we were running away from the Sam and um, then um, my two friends, they like ran into their bedroom and then I didn't make it. And then um, Sam grabbed me and pulled me into like the calm down room and then she like wouldn't let me go. Like each time I was standing up she was like holding me down and then she was just like having like a panic attack and then they came in and they were trying to like sedate her and stuff and then the next day um we all had like a meeting and then she said that we were like so sam was like screaming at me and my friend saying like oh you're she called bitches. us bitches yeah yeah she was just like oh you're bitches you don't care about anyone else but themselves um so that was scary and then the next day she was pretending to have bitches yeah she's not having no no she wasn't in that room yeah and then she just woke up and then she just like well, she went up to bed and she was like, I can make my sex And I literally, I just stood there, I was like, oh, nice for some, yeah. but... How did you feel when this was happening? I don't know, I was scared, because, like, you can't get out. The, like, the windows, like, they only open a little bit at the door. You, you can't get out. can't get out without a nurse, and the nurse is left. Yeah. You can't, like, everyone's, like, I don't know, everyone's calling their mum to, like, cry. And yeah, and you had to like sleep there because the, the, the doors were open up because obviously they needed to get in and it was a problem. So like, she could have like got in at any time and she was just a bit scary person. And they didn't like make her leave. Yeah. She just stayed there and then like the following night I was on um, when they like watch you and you sleep because they thought I was going to like die the night because my heart. And then they kept the door open and I was terrified she was going to come in. Because sometimes also they're like, they need to toilet or something. I was like, I need medication, they have to go out the room. And I'm just so scared. She'd like run into my room and like attack me. Yeah, that was terrifying. What did the nurses do? Did they literally like, she's ill. Yeah, like, I, was like, I was like, we're all ill, but like, I don't think she's Yeah, like she used to be someone that was where she can't attack other girls. stressful and for me and then I could just hear her in the background and then, like, and then, like screaming. <laughs> like we were just told to like stay in places. But like it's quite hard to do that because like you're scared for your life, especially yeah. when you like, this person. Yeah. And we told them we were terrified of yeah. And she was like, she got really like defensive about it and stuff like and we were just kinda like but like it's understandable like yeah. if I did that to you you'd be scared. There was one time the girl who's already been to I wasn't there for every time she came up, but I do remember one time I was sort of doing that I was going to be like, she was going to be like, I was going to be like, Then it sort of escalated quite quickly, she started like, trying to pull open the locked door, and she started screaming, and then yeah, things escalated, and she started to get to the start. I remember we were all sitting in that room together, and we were all really happy. I mean, we were worried from that and for the staff, because some of the staff were getting quite seriously hurt. And then it was dinner time, and we had to walk past her while she was sort of like freaking out. And I remember, obviously, dinner's hard enough for someone to just walk in and just hearing someone screaming and like. Because we were 
so worried for the Brexit is the first time we've seen him do something like this and like, it just made it so much harder to live in that atmosphere. And do you think your experience there is will help? Definitely didn't help. They just they just sort of fed me up and they discharged me while I was still in a really bad place mentally and I relapsed and got into a different mode after I was discharged. I don't know, I think they sort of I think they made my illness stronger by sort of making me want to be ill because I thought I've been impatient once and now I want to keep on getting ill, but thankfully I'm a lot better. I think it's good since you've been there and when I was there, I had to leave. Talk about that. Um, but I remember wanting to be there, so I would have to say, I remember at one point when this was section, so I would have to stay. It's just that they get you in that kind of that if you're not ill enough, you can't stay, but then you're still not feeling well. It just gets worse when you show back out. So I understand what you mean. I think they helped me gain the weight on. I was told if I didn't go, I could section. I feel like it's more that you sort of like feeding them and it's cheese. So like they're just trying I feel to like force you to eat. They just kind of like feed you up. Yeah. And then go better. So they don't really help you to like no time. Yeah, so year, more than a year on I'm still so much there and still bad t shirt and still still like having problems that like, can never stop with that like, Yeah. And, like, Considering that the hospital costs around £5,300 a week, it appears that two of us don't consider it was worth it. After these interviews, I reflected on my own experience in the hospital. I recall feeling extremely depressed all day and the doctors only making me feel worse. I wasn't listened to and I cried at least three times a day. I found it easy to sneak in items to self-harm with and this was not checked properly. Six months after leaving, I had my first major suicide attempt. I felt let down and that if the hospital couldn't help me, then no one could. All in all, my experience was not a happy one. And to me, the only redeeming factor was being introduced to some of the bravest people I have ever met.